Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I'm going to remind you about a few things from uh, field theory all right so you know uh, so uh, recall from uh, field theory so you know if you have l over k the field extension you take a field extension L over K okay. Then we say uh, when uh, an element of uh, uh, L over K is algebraic okay when an element of L is an algebraic element over K if it is an element of capital L is said to be algebraic over capital K if it satisfies a polynomial a non trivial polynomial uh, with K capital K coefficients in one variable okay so and if every uh, element of l satisfies such a polynomial uh, uh, over k okay then we see l over k is a, an algebra uh, we say l over k is an algebraic extension okay that is every element of l is algebraic over k all right and if uh, you have elements of l which don't satisfy any polynomial any such polynomial with coefficients in k we we call such elements as transcendental elements okay and uh, uh, well uh, if l over k is a finite extension in the sense that if you treat l as a vector space over k if the dimension of l as a vector space over k is finite then a finite extension is always algebraic all right and uh, uh, and in fact uh, 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 but of course an algebraic extension need not be finite okay. Uh, now you see uh, if L over k is uh, not algebraic then it has transcendental elements okay there are elements which are non-algebraic okay and then uh, given a set of transcendental elements you can uh, you can define when that set is algebraically independent over k okay and this is analogous to the definition of linear independence over k. So uh, 
a set of you know a set of elements of a vector space uh, is said to be linearly independent if they if no finite subset of that set satisfies a non trivial linear relation with coefficients in k okay so in the same way a set of elements of l which uh, uh, you know uh, uh, is said to be algebraic or uh, is said to be uh, uh, is said to be algebraically independent over capital k if any finite subset of that set does not satisfy any polynomial relation with coefficients in k so you know if you give me finitely many elements of capital l okay then those finitely many elements are said to be algebraically independent over capital k if those finitely many elements are not zeros of some polynomial over k in those finitely many variables in as many finitely many variables okay a non trivial they should not be they, they should that element that tuple of elements should not be a zero okay of a polynomial in as many variables with k coefficients right that is when you say those elements are algebraically independent and this is when you take a finite set of elements and an infinite set of elements is said to be algebraically independent if every finite subset of that infinite set is algebraically independent okay and uh, then there is this uh, uh, just like a, in the case of a vector space you define uh, the dimension uh, as the max you know it is it is the it is a cardinality of a yeah, maximal uh, set of uh, linearly independent elements okay in the same way if you have a field extension which is not algebraic then you can define its uh, so called transcendence degree okay its degree of transcendence okay to be the uh, cardinality of a yeah, maximal algebra max, maximal uh, algebraically independent set okay so if there are elements lo which are not algebraic over k you can try to they are transcendental elements okay and then you try to take uh, try to find a maximal subset of these uh, such elements which are algebraically independent okay and that cardinality uh, will always be the same okay any two uh, just like uh, if you take any two bases of a vector space are bijective okay in the same way uh, any two sets of maximally uh, any two maximal sets of algebraically independent elements will be bijective and that and the cardinality of that set is called the transcendence degree of l over k okay and we say that uh, uh, l over k uh, has a uh, uh, you know we we can we say that l over k has a uh, uh, has a separating transcendence base okay if you can find uh, if you can find it uh, you can find a you know uh, set of elements which forms a transcendence basis okay a transcendence basis is just given by a maximal set of algebraically independent elements okay if you can find a transcendent transcendental basis transcendence basis okay such that you know uh, uh, l over the field adjoint to k uh, given by those uh, given by the transcendence basis is a finite uh, algebraic extension okay so you know we, we, there is a you want a picture like this so l so you have k okay and in l you have this family of elements alpha j uh, where you know uh, uh, j is in some indexing set j capital j all right then you have the you have the field generated by these alpha j's so this is the so this is a transcendence basis and the transcendence basis is you know it is just a uh, it is just the analog of a basis all right 
So, it consists of a maximal uh, subset of algebraically independent elements a usual basis will con consist of a maximal uh, subset of linearly independent elements a transcendence basis will consist of a maximal set of algebraically independent elements ok. So, you, you uh, so you want a situation where you can find a transcendence basis ok and you want this extension to be uh, 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 finite separable ok. So, you want uh, I mean this is the best thing that can happen with a field extension the best thing that can happen with the field extension is that the field extension splits up into two extensions like this the first one is given uh, we said that this extension is a purely transcendental extension ok because it is the extension which con contains <coughs> only it is gotten by simply adjoining all the transcendental elements from at all the elements of a transcendence basis ok and then this over this will only be a finite extension this will be algebraic ok because there would not be already uh, this contains a maximal set of algebraically independent elements ok this over this cannot be transcendental because if there is an element of this which is transcendental over this then I can take that element and add it to this to get a bigger uh, transcendence basis and that is not possible. So, this over this has to be algebraic ok and the fact is that you can make it would be nice if this is a finite separable extension ok and that is that always happens if the field capital K is algebraically closed ok. So, so, uh, uh, so this so all this happens if K is algebraically closed well in fact it the, uh, it happens uh, even under a more weaker condition it happens if capital K is a, what is called a perfect field alright and uh, uh, but let us not worry about it alright. Uh, uh, basically what it uh, the definition of a perfect field is that if uh, if a field is of characteristic 0 it is called perfect and if it is of characteristic P it is called perfect you can al if you can always find P roots ok. The, if you take k power p you should get k ok and uh, you should be able to find uh, pth roots for all your elements right. So, uh, so an algebraically closed field is always a perfect field because finding pth roots uh, is just amounting to solve equations and over an algebraically closed field you can always solve equations because that is the definition of algebraically closed therefore an algebraically closed field is always perfect and for a perfect field you have this very beautiful situation of course it is important that I need a finite separable extension here alright and this part will be a purely transcendental extension ok and uh, this is uh, this is some field theory alright. But the important thing is that we want to apply it when capital K is small k our algebraically closed field and when L is a function field of a variety ok. So, uh, applies if uh, capital K is small k for us small k is the algebraically closed field over which we are doing algebraic geometry that is the field over which we are studying varieties and uh, and uh, uh, capital L is the function field of x for a variety x over k ok. So, this is our application. So, in all these things uh, uh, our viewpoint is that this small k th this capital K is our small k and this L is the function field of a variety and then the theorem is that the function field of the variety is a finite separable extension of a purely transcendental extension uh, of k and you know you know that uh, if L is kx then the transcendence degree of k x will over small k will give you the dimension of the variety therefore, uh, but you know the transcendental degree will be 
just the cardinality of this j because the transcendence degree is just the uh, the size or the cardinality of a transcendence basis. So, you know if the variety x has dimension r then this j will have r elements. So, this will just be a uh, this will be small k and this will be small k adjoined with uh, r indeterminates or r transcendental elements all right. So, you know so the picture will look like this uh, you will get small k and then you will have uh, small k of uh, uh, x1 etcetera xr okay and then you will have l of uh, l which is actually kx I, I, I do not have to use l so let me just and this part will be finite separable. Okay. This is a so this is the picture that we need. If you take the function field of any variety x, then that function field, what kind of an extension is it of k? You can break it up into two pieces. The first piece is a purely transcendental extension, okay. It is an extension which is gotten by simply adding as many variables as the dimension of x, okay. So this part will correspond will will contribute to the transcendence degree this will this will give you the transcendence degree as r and this part will not have any transcendence this will because all the trans uh, because x1 through xr are already a maximal set of algebraically independent elements. So, this over this will be algebraic and not only algebraic it will actually be finite okay. Uh, and of course, a finite extension is not always algebraic and not only that it will actually be a separable extension ok. And uh, the separability is a is a technical condition and uh, 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 it is very very important and the, the reason why it is important for example, in field theory is that whenever you have a finite separable extension that can always be generated by a single by adjoining a single element and that is called the so called uh, theorem of the primitive element the theorem of the primitive element says that whenever you have a field extension which is finite and separable then the bigger extension can be gotten by adjoining a single element to the smaller field okay. So, this finite separable extension actually tells you that this k of x is this small k x1 etcetera xr comma y you can you can find a capital Y in kx okay such that you adjoin this capital Y to this field you get this field and that is all of capital Kx alright. So, you know the uh, so this you get this capital Y because of the fact that this over this is finite separable and you are using the so called theorem of the primitive element which says that a finite ex separable extension can be gotten by adjoining just one element right and uh, in fact the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you see uh, in the the theorem of the primitive element says more it says that uh, if you take a uh, uh, set of finite finitely many generators for this okay then that primitive element is in, is even a linear combination of those generators with coefficients coming from the smaller field ok. So, uh, you know so the moral of the story is that you have very nice uh, description in terms of fields if you are working with a variety alright uh, I mean uh, if you are working with a function field of a variety right. Now you see uh, now what I want to uh, uh, you to understand is that well you see you take now you know you take you take x to be uh, uh, you take x to be a variety over k all right suppose the dimension of x is small r all right and you take kx its field of rational functions then you can find of course you know x1 through xr which you can think of as uh, r algebraically independent rational functions on x okay so a capital X1 through capital XR are R algebraically independent rational functions on X okay and uh, 
then if you take the subfield generated by these r independent algebraically independent rational functions you get this field alright and then k x over that is a finite separable extension therefore by the theorem of the primitive element you can get this from this by adjoining a single element y which is yet another rational function on x ok and uh, uh, you know uh, the point is that this y is actually belonging to k x ok and uh, and k x is k x over this intermediate field is finite. So, it is algebraic. So, in fact y satisfies a polynomial uh, with coefficients here ok y satisfies a polynomial with coefficients here and uh, uh, the moral of the story is that y if you clear denominators y will satisfy a polynomial with uh, you know coefficients in the polynomial ring in r variables you can have that polynomial to be an irreducible polynomial ok alright and therefore uh, and therefore you know that polynomial in uh, an affine space with so many variables its zero set will give a hypersurface and that hypersurface its function field will exactly be this ok. So, this argument tells you that the function field of x ok is the same as the function field of a hypersurface uh, in uh, r plus 1 dimensional affine space where r is a dimension of x ok and we have already seen last lecture that uh, I think last lecture or maybe a couple of lectures ago that if two varieties have the same function fields then they are birational. So, all this argument tells you together that any variety x of dimension r is birational to a hypersurface uh, in affine r plus 1 space ok. So, so let me write that uh, let me write that down see uh, y is is gotten from the uh, primitive element theorem. and uh, and in fact uh, uh, since k k of x is finite over uh, uh, k of x1 etc xr uh, and y is in kx we have y algebraic over k of x1 etcetera xr ok. So, uh, so y satisfies a polynomial an irreducible polynomial. it satisfies an irreducible polynomial in uh, uh, in one variable over k x 1 etcetera x r ok. But what are the elements of k round bracket x 1 etcetera x r they are actually uh, quotients of polynomials in those r variables when you put square brackets it is the polynomial ring in r variables when, but when you put round brackets you are going to its quotient field ok. So, uh, so y satisfies an irreducible polynomial in one variable ok uh, and uh, and in fact you know uh, if you take uh, the degree of that polynomial that degree will be the same as the degree of this finite extension ok. For any finite extension uh, 
uh, generated by a single element the degree of the finite extension is the same as the degree of the minimal polynomial of that element and that the, the minimal polynomial of that element is the unique irreducible polynomial that that element satisfies uh, it is the polynomial of least degree that that element satisfies ok. So, so this so here I am looking at the minimal polynomial of y ok uh, over over this uh, this extension right and uh, 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 so now but you know now the coefficients of this if in fact you can even make that polynomial monic ok if you want but the point is uh, 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 that is because the leading uh, uh, and the, uh, the leading term uh, can always always be made 1 by dividing ok uh, by its coefficient but uh, but the fact is that if I you, but you know if you think of these as quotients of polynomials in R variables and you clear denominators what you will get is that you will get that you know you will get that uh, y satisfies a polynomial in uh, R plus 1 variables ok if you clear by clearing denominators y satisfies a polynomial an irreducible polynomial uh, in r plus 1 variable. So you know, uh, so what you are doing is uh, y satisfies uh, an irreducible polynomial in one variable. Call that one variable as S, okay, and the coef the coefficients are all here, okay, and but the coefficients are therefore quotients of polynomials in the excise. All right, if you clear denominators, finally, uh, you know and you rewrite instead of the x i s you put the t s ok you will get a irreducible polynomial in r plus 1 variables ok which uh, uh, which the whole tuple x 1 through x r up to y satisfies right and now you know uh, uh, see the but you know this is this is a this is a polynomial it is an irreducible polynomial in n r a, so I should not put n here this should be r sorry this should be r. So, this is an irreducible polynomial in r plus 1 variables what does it 0 what is it 0 set it is a hypersurface in uh, a r plus 1 ok. So, the 0 set of f of t 1 etcetera t r comma s this is a hypersurface. in a r plus 1 we have already seen this a hypersurface in affine space is simply given by uh, um, the 0 set of a single irreducible polynomial a hypersurface is by definition a co dimension 1 sub variety an irreducible closed subset of dimension 1 less than the dimension of the affine space ok. So, this is a hypersurface in a r ok and for this hypersurface ok what is the uh, what is the function field the function field will precisely be k x ok. This hypersurface the function field of this hypersurface how do you get it what you will have to do is you have to first get its affine coordinate ring which is gotten by taking this polynomial ring in r plus 1 variables and you have to divide by f ok you have to divide by f because that is the ideal of the hypersurface the ideal of the hypersurface is generated by f. So, you have to divide by the ideal generated by f and then you will get the affine coordinate ring of the hypersurface and then you have to take its quotient field alright. But then 
if you divide by f you the, the moment you divide by f and then invert everything you will get back kx because that is how f was gotten. So, what you will get is that the the the, rash, the function field of this hypersurface is kx by definition the function field of this hypersurface is exactly kx okay because it will be the polynomial ring in these r plus 1 variables you divide by the ideal generated by f okay and then you will get a finitely you will get an integral domain you take its quotient field okay. So, essentially what you are doing is you are you are you are you are inverting uh, you are inverting everything except that uh, you are inverting it is like taking the quotient field of uh, you know uh, the polynomial ring in these r plus 1 variables, but putting the additional condition that uh, this f of this is equal to 0, but putting the condition that f of that is equal to 0 will give you the smaller field okay which is k x right by construction, but so the so the moral of the story is that uh, now the function field of the hypersurface is the same as the function field of x. Now, we have already seen that if two arrays have the same function field then they are birational. So, this implies that uh, this implies that x is birational to this hypersurface ok. So, x is birational to this hypersurface. So, what this tells you is that I mean the whole purpose of my recalling all this though I did it very quickly and at you on, on, on your part this will demand some more reading ok. Uh, is that uh, is just to tell you that if you have a variety of dimension r then it is birational to a hypersurface in a r plus 1. So, this is a fact that I need to use I am going to use the fact that given a variety of dimension r it is having an open set which is isomorphic to an open subset of a hypersurface in uh, r plus 1 dimensional affine space. So, you know uh, roughly what I am saying is the following thing I am saying take a variety of dimension r there is an open set where the open set looks like the 0 set given by a single equation in an affine space of dimension 1 more the variety has x has dimension r ok. You take an affine space of dimension 1 more which is a r plus 1 and there is a hypersurface there and an open subset of the hypersurface which looks like the open subset of your variety. So, I am just saying that given a variety of dimension r there is an open set which looks like the 0 set of a single equation in a affine space of dimension 1 more. So, that is this that is this fact and uh, now I I, I I I use that to prove this theorem ok and I do that in the following way what I say is well you know if I take uh, so this is a standard trick in algebraic geometry you want to prove something about an arbitrary variety uh, you want to prove some open condition ok something that is happening on an open set ok. So, for example, here I am trying to you know what I am trying to show is that I am trying to say that the condition of non singularity is open because its complement is uh, you know it is equivalent to saying that the condition of singularity is closed and I want to say it is non empty open ok. So, what I have to show is that you know the set of points where x is uh, 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 non singular is actually a non empty open set ok. So, you know I am so I am just saying that you know if I prove that you take a hypersurface for a hypersurface if you show that the singular points is a proper closed set then I am done. Because if I show for any hypersurface the set of singular points is a proper closed set then I am saying that there is a open set which consists of 
good points. But you know, but an open but any variety has an open set which is isomorphic to an open subset of the hypersurface. Therefore, uh, uh, it will have uh, good points because under, under an isomorphism of varieties, local rings are preserved. Okay, since local rings are preserved, this smoothness condition will be preserved. So, under an isomorphism of varieties, a smooth point will go only to a smooth point. So, if you give me any variety, all right, then. I know that uh, I, I if I can I know that there is an open subset of that variety which is isomorphic to an open subset of a uh, hypersurface and I know a open subset of an of, of the of the hypersurface will contain smooth points if I know that then I will know that uh, x will contain smooth points the moment x contains smooth points this becomes a proper subset. So, it become a proper closed subset. So, you know this theorem is just to show that every variety contains at least one smooth point ok and I prove this theorem by reducing to the case of a hypersurface because I know every variety of dimension r is birational to a hypersurface in r plus 1 dimension of fine space ok. So, because of this fact assume that x is uh, assume that the variety x is a hypersurface right. So, so now the proof is just probably a few lines so assume x is a hypersurface in uh, uh, z of f in a r plus 1 ok. What do I have to show? I have to show the uh, singular points of x uh, is a proper subset ok. So, if let us look at this let us go by contradiction if the singular points of x is all of x ok. Then what it means is that dou a f by dot uh, uh, x i ok uh, uh, vanishes on z of f for all i from 1 to etcetera up to r plus 1. So, here now you know the x i's are all the affine coordinates in r plus 1 dimensional space and if the singular points uh, is the whole of x that means these uh, uh, I mean these components of the gradient of f ok they all need to vanish ok. A point will be a smooth point if at least one of them does not vanish at that point, but the only way that every point is not smooth ok is that all of these guys vanish alright. But then you see what does this mean if see after all these are polynomials and if they vanish on the variety then they have to, then you know that uh, by the Hilbert Nordstrom and sides they have to be some power of uh, I mean they have to be in the ideal generated by f ok. So, you see so, so by the Nordstrom and sides you see dou f by dou x i they all belong to the ideal generated by f for every i that this is because of Nordstrom and Sachs which says that you know if a polynomial vanishes on a variety then some power of that polynomial should be contained in the ideal of the variety ok. So, you know if this vanishes on z of f then some power of this is contained in the ideal of f ideal of z of f, but ideal of z of f is just the ideal generated by f ok and if some power of that is contained in f then that itself is has to be contained in f because f is irreducible and therefore, uh, the ideal generated by that is prime alright. So, you will get this, but then what is the degree of f this is more than the degree of this will have degree at least one less right because you have taken a partial derivative and therefore, this condition will tell you that this is uh, these are all identically 0. So, so th this will imply that dou f by dou x i uh, 
uh, are identically 0 for all i. Okay. It will tell you that all these partial derivatives are identically 0. Now you see if you are in characteristic 0 this cannot happen okay. because if uh, the f if when will the partial derivatives of all the variables be, be 0 I did not always will, will be 0 for a polynomial if those variables do not appear in the polynomial at all okay if the pair if the if the if a variable appears in a polynomial okay and if you are in characteristic 0 okay then uh, the uh, that variable will come with a coefficient all right. So, when you take a partial derivative okay the coefficient will not kill it because you are in characteristic 0 and the partial derivatives cannot vanish okay. So, the fact that all the partial derivatives vanish so this implies that characteristic of k is not 0 okay because in characteristic 0 this cannot happen and in characteristic so if characteristic is not 0 then the characteristic of k is positive is a prime positive all right and in positive characteristic if a polynomial uh, is is, uh, is in a certain variable partial derivative is 0 it means that the polynomial should be a polynomial in the pth power of that variable. So, this implies that f is equal to f, f is uh, polynomial in x i power p for every i this is a result from characteristic p and and this will tell you that you know f is g power p because you know since you are in since your field is uh, algebraically closed you can take pth roots of all the coefficients and you can use the fact that a plus b plus I mean if you want a plus b whole power p is a power p plus b power p okay. So, if a polynomial is a polynomial in all these x i power p okay then you take the pth root of all the coefficients then you can write the polynomial itself as g power p and but this will contradict the fact that f is irreducible contradicts irreducibility of f so this contradiction tells you that if x is a hypersurface then the singular points cannot be the whole of x okay that means there are smooth points but already we have seen as a corollary the singular points is a closed set so that means the complement of this closed set namely the set of smooth points is non empty okay so the set of smooth points of hypersurface is <coughs> irreducible non empty and dense and since any arbitrary variety is birational to a hypersurface its singular points will also be only a proper closed set okay so that proves that on any variety you have a open dense uh, irreducible subset consisting of uh, smooth points non singular points okay and the bad points namely the singular points they only correspond to a proper closed set so I will stop here.